Well, you know, the, the three bases upon which oftentimes uh, a lot of African countries relate to the UK are uh, the basis of trade, uh, immigration, and of course aid. Uh, well, we will get to the part of aid very, very soon. But then, you know, the question of immigration continues to linger because, you know, when the Brexit vote came, it, it, for a lot of people, uh, it came on anti-immigration sentiment. And it would look like the United Kingdom keeps trying to reassure people that we're not going insular, we're not uh, racist or xenophobic. But how, how convincing do you think that that message has been? I, I, I understand the question, um, and there was a spike, a rise, um, a temporary rise, I have to say, in xenophobic uh, attacks, either whether that's verbal abuse or physical uh, attacks in the UK uh, after the Brexit vote. Um, you will know that the British government reacted very strongly to that, has made it clear that it is totally unacceptable. Uh, there have been cases of people being arrested for that, for prosecuted for that. Um, that is not acceptable in what I still believe uh, and recognise, and I hope that uh, Nigerians do too, as a, a, a very, very tolerant, welcoming society. Nigerians living in the UK and Nigerians living in London, maybe one or two have had difficulties, but the vast majority uh, know that the UK remains open uh, and, a, a, and a place which is not fundamentally xenophobic. When those uh, attacks have happened, uh, the authorities, the security uh, police and so on, uh, have taken very firm action and we will continue to do that. Um, but the basic fundamentals, I think, are there. The point that you made about the debate around immigration being a key element of the Brexit um, uh, vote, I'm not denying that. That is absolutely the case. Um, there is a sense from some in the UK that uh, we have been too open in the past to EU, in particular EU uh, immigration, um, and I think that did have an effect on, on the vote. And that's why the Prime Minister in her speech yesterday was talking about uh, immigration. Um, but I don't think it changes the fundamentals of, of the United Kingdom uh, and the way in which we will remain very open uh, to Nigerians, indeed to, to all those who want to come and, uh, uh, and visit us. You know, the most amazing thing here is that the UK has big, been one of the biggest proponent of, uh, proponents of globalization. With this looking inwards, doesn't this negate the philosophy of globalization for the UK? Well, I would challenge the premise that we're looking inwards. Um, you could say that the Brexit vote means we have to look even more uh, outwards. Um, there's a new uh, slogan, if you like, that the government has picked up, which is Global Britain. You know, we're still uh, a world player. If you look at uh, the United Nations Security Council, we're still a, a permanent member of that. Uh, if you look at the G7 group, the G20 group, the Commonwealth, a very important uh, group of countries of which uh, Nigeria is a member, NATO, etc., etc., etc. So we are pulling out of one... Um, group, regional group. Um, we are not turning our backs on the world. We're not turning our backs on Europe. Uh, we will remain a part of Europe. That has been made very clear. Um, and I think if you look at the way that the government is responding to the vote, uh, if you look at my new boss, Boris Johnson's uh, words and uh, his travels and his very outward looking um, uh, approach, then I think we're not looking inwards. Um, we're looking outwards. Um, and as a representative, uh, of the British government overseas. That's very much part of my job to help that understanding. Um, so I would challenge the premise that we are uh, either originally an inward looking country, we've never been an inward looking country in my view, but I don't think we're turning into that either. You know, in, uh, no, in that case, uh, talking about Nigeria, because uh, a, a while ago you, you reminded us of how the number of Nigerians doing business in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Let's flip and see the number of UK uh, citizens who do business back home in Nigeria. How yeah. much of believer, believability do they have in the Nigerian economy? Well, I, th I, I would make a dif distinction between those British uh, companies who've been here for a very long time, uh, and you know, obviously, the, the huge companies like Shell, Diageo, of course, who own Guinness, um, Reckitt Benkiser, um, GSK, Unilever, etc., etc. They are, they've been well established in Nigeria, um, they have good businesses in Nigeria, they're doing, broadly speaking, they're doing well despite the difficult circumstances uh, in Nigeria. Um, and I think they are in for the long haul. They know Nigeria, they understand the country, um, and they will stay um, and, and see it through, as it were. Um, new investors need a bit more encouragement, um, and that's part of my job. I was uh, yesterday at the uh, stock exchange here in Lagos, um, talking to people around, talking to the 
chairman there about how we can encourage British business to invest in, in the UK, uh, sorry, invest in Nigeria. Nigeria. That's an important part of my job. Um, but you're right, there is some nervousness about that. Um, you know, the government is rightly focusing here on the ease of doing business. How can we make it easier for not just British companies, but any foreign investors coming in and doing business in Nigeria? The president's fight against corruption is a really important element of that. And what I'm picking up is nervousness around some of the uh, risks around uh, investing in Nigeria. Um, foreign exchange is one uh, which comes up very frequently. Um, at the same time, I'm saying look at the potential, look at the medium to longer term in Nigeria. It's good to get in early, uh, as it were, and to uh, the fundamentals are there. You can do well in Nigeria. Just, just let me come in. But, I, know, I, but, I, know my but, yeah. I know my colleagues uh, would, would really want to put some more questions to you, but uh, talking about corruption fight in Nigeria, yeah. l let me ask this question because it bothers a huge percentage of Nigerians, talking about uh, some looted funds and some of them stashed somewhere, mm -hmm. maybe in the UK specifically, mm -hmm. and how your government is working <coughs> to making sure that uh, uh, they repatriate such funds uh, back home. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it, I don't know how many, uh, how much uh, looted funds are in uh, in the UK, but no doubt there are some there. Um, the government is working. The British government is working very hard with uh, Nigerian authorities uh, to get those funds back to Nigeria. You know, the United Kingdom, the British government, um, and, and nobody in the UK has any interest in holding on to one cobo of, of Nigerian wealth. It's important that it comes back here uh, and is used for the benefit of the Nigerian people and the Nigerian uh, country, the country of Nigeria. So th that's the fundamental. We've recently, uh, a minister of, for immigration came over uh, to uh, Nigeria, recently signed a memorandum of understanding uh, with the Attorney General here in Nigeria on this question of uh, return of, uh, of assets. Um, that will make it easier from a, a, a procedural point of view to um, find those assets and to return them. Um, it's also the case that you know, we have respect for the rule of law, there are judicial processes which are currently ongoing in, in the UK, uh, they have to be seen through. Uh, but the government is looking at this, the British government is looking at this very actively uh, to see what we can do to speed up that process. It, it's, it's quite complicated, um, but I do hope that nobody thinks that you know, we're holding on to Nigerian money for for our own purposes, that's absolutely not the case. We absolutely agree that this money needs to come back to Nigeria. If you could speak to that a little further, because I mean, you know, when that MOU was signed, there yep. are many who expected maybe sooner rather than later they'll have some of those funds uh, getting back to the country. But yes, you say you have judicial processes, you yep. use the word, you like to speed it up. But how soon do we expect perhaps any funds coming back? I can't put a date on that. Um, you know, as I said, there are, there are processes which are ongoing. I would hope that, that some of the assets uh, at least can come back uh, pretty quickly. We were never going to be able to sign an MOU and then the next day you know, come back with billions of dollars or pounds uh, back, to the, back to Nigeria. That, that you know, wasn't going to happen. Uh, I think there may be some uh, raised expectations in Nigeria about how quickly that can happen. The point about the MOU was that it will help to, uh, it does help to speed up that process to make sure those procedures are working effectively. Um, and well, uh, I'll, be the, I'll be the first to shout from the rooftops when, uh, when some money comes back and I do hope it's, it's soon but I can't put an actual date on it. So does that mean that there'll be uh, new measures for perhaps Nigerians who want to invest <coughs> in the UK haven't signed this MOU in terms of the checks that will be conducted? Well, you know, at the anti-corruption summit, um, which was held in May this yeah. year, President Buhari, as you know, was there. It was held in London, uh, hosted by the former uh, Prime Minister David Cameron. A number of international agreements were signed there that make it, make it easier for uh, authorities in countries to check on, you know, just who owns what. So what's called beneficial ownership, a register of beneficial ownership. You know, how many of these properties in London are owned by foreigners? Well, you know, it's not necessarily known, but laws are coming into, f into force in the UK and elsewhere which will make it uh, obligatory for people to reveal the, wealth, the, the source of their wealth, uh, if you like, um, in order to invest in the UK. So um, that does not, should not deter legitimate investors who of course we welcome, but it should put off people who are, who are thinking that London might or the UK might be a good place to, to, to put any looted assets. Um, and that's an interna those are international agreements which the Nigerian government has signed up to as well. So, uh, I'm, yeah, I think the, the, the climate is changing. 
uh, around corruption. Absolutely the case here in Nigeria under President Buhari. Um, and, the, and the British government is really at the forefront of some of those international measures uh, to tackle corruption wherever it might uh, uh, take place. If, if I could link it up with uh, the new immigration laws, I mean, the Home Secretary, uh, I'll actually speak about some of this. There's been several impressions about how landlords will be required to ask maybe non-EU members or immigrants their immigration status. And then I, I came across that of, uh, I think it's Simon Walker, who did say he's of the uh, Institute of Directors. He warned that some government's rhetoric was starting to make the UK look, in his words, unwelcoming and hostile to people whom, he says, our export markets depend on. Well, I would challenge what Simon Walker uh, is saying. I know Simon Walker. He is, yeah, you're right, he's from the Institute of Directors. Um, I would challenge uh, that the UK is um, becoming more hostile, I think, was the words uh, that he used to investors. I think the UK remains very open to investors, but investors need to um, follow the rules. Um, and, you know, as, the, as you would expect in any country, in Nigeria, anywhere else, um, when, when those rules are being followed, uh, then that's absolutely no problem. When it comes to uh, breaking the rules, um, then any government has every right to, uh, to clamp down on, on the people who are, who are breaking those rules. So uh, I, I would disagree with Simon. I don't usually, but uh, in this case, I would certainly disagree with him. <laughs> Magwe has got a question. Magwe? Okay, oh, well. yes. Yeah, so it was one event that almost went unnoticed, but I did watch that speech. Uh, Theresa May addressing uh, the conference on modern <coughs> slavery at the United Nations General Assembly, and I did hear her say uh, that uh, the United Kingdom had committed first five million pounds uh, to us combating those uh, combating the problem and the fighting of those who profit from uh, uh, you know modern slavery as it were exploiting other people for business and profit uh, can you tell us why expatiate a bit more on why the United Kingdom is interested in this and why Nigeria is the first example well I guess we'll have to take a moment now we'll return and then we can address the question do join us again <laughs>